Dakshita Rajkuma, the Chief Sustainability Officer for Engie, and Valerie Ite, founding CEO of Clique Recyclable, spoke to the Thrive community about ways to protect our environment and allow for sustainable growth. Their talks were part of our SDG 13 climate action theme for the month. Dakshita and Valerie kindly took questions from the audience. So the question is for Dakshita. Uh, in the past, we have thought of quick fixes to our problems. Could any of the adaptations you have mentioned have negative interactions and accelerate climate change further? If so, what can be done to prevent these negative interactions? Okay, so to answer your question, um, rightfully so, and I, I will give you kind of two examples that we're currently facing uh, today. The first one is that we all know the Amazon rainforest uh, currently is the largest carbon sequester carbon sink naturally, but to date it is it's not sequestering or it's emitting more carbon dioxide than it's actually sequestering, and that is only due to human activities such as agricultural growth, um, urbanization, that is causing deforestation. Uh, and ultimately impacting the, the carbon sink uh, elements of the rainforest. So anything, so we, if we refocus just on agriculture and what Valerie has mentioned, anything around agriculture that's resulting in the impact of uh, or biodiversity loss is a great tragedy uh, when it comes to the whole climate uh, actions on the ground and carbon sequestration. The other example that we currently see is the, the current geopolitical situation between Ukraine and Russia. As much as we are supposed to, to continue on the journey of energy transition, increasing our renewable energy portfolios in the energy mix, uh, reducing our dependencies on gas and fossil fuels. But because of this current geopolitical situation, it's kind of setting us back a few steps because now countries and economies need to have a steady burden, uh, a supply of uh, fuel uh, to support their economies. And this is resulting in kind of stopping that energy transition process or slowing it down, uh, as to say. Uh, so this is, is currently where we're sitting at. The solutions are, you know, as much as I can say they're easy, it's, it's glaring to us. Uh, and it comes down to, you know, having stable economies um, that support the energy transition. So the quicker we um, move and migrate to having an energy mix of clean energy in our portfolios, the more stable we become. Um, so this is, I think, a major contributor to, to countries and the, the net zero commitments or climate commitments. Secondly is if we, rethink our uh, you know practices when it comes to agricultural manufacturing as Valerie has highlighted and not really think of the traditional processes I think introducing those new advanced technologies um, help that whole climate adaptation process uh, for the future as I mentioned earlier on the only challenge is the financial implications to invest in those innovative technologies today so if you get those investors who are, are now part and parcel on board um, to buy into those innovation and technologies, I think we're ready to, to address the climate uh, actions immediately. Okay, uh, thank you, Dakshita. I think that answers the question very well. Uh, the next question is, well, I think it's for Valerie. So the question is, banning plastic is very practical in developed nations, but in emerging economies and underdeveloped nations, this banning can give rise to black market. Uh, um, okay, uh, shall I answer? Yeah. If I may continue, uh, Valerie, just one uh, more sorry. sentence to it. So the possibility of low price and cheap plastic bag might be produced how to tackle this par uh, parallel black market is the question. Okay, um, so I don't think that is going to make a black market because plastic is not good at all, okay? So what you need and what we are looking at is some association, for example, in Thailand and in other places that are recuperating all this plastic 
okay, and give it to the right way of um, uh, recycling management, which is very important. When you're speaking about um, a black market, uh, are you meaning that they are going to sell back this plastic? Because um, I don't really understand when you are thinking black market because of plastic. I mean, plastic, one new single plastic, you will just get read about it because it's harmful for the planet. So for me, is that impossible that there is a black market in something that are um, uh, making a, a problem for uh, our planet, okay? But what we will see, uh, better is that a lot of people uh, making new business about uh, taking out this plastic from the environment. And that's good because we will um, uh, find a lot of new company or people getting this plastic to get it out from the environment and to sell it to the right company that know how to make it a, a, a recycling uh, pl plastic. Because you know that the plastic gets, uh, there is a lot of different plastic, by the way. Uh, but we really need uh, to eliminate it as the last data that we have. We can find some in the blood of human and we don't have actually the data about the damage that is doing in the human body. Uh, we can see that the last past five years, uh, if you are going to um, uh, the National Library of Medicine uh, of England, you will see um, that since five years, uh, we have an increase All uh, a lot of scientists looking at uh, how uh, this plastic is damaged uh, us. There is another uh, study that shows that in the water, in five continents, in more than 20, 24 uh, country, um, uh, 124 uh, country, uh, found um, that there is plastic in the water that we are uh, that we are uh, drinking. So um, I don't think that we will see a, a, a black man market for money. I think that we will see a lot of people getting, uh, perhaps some positive, uh, getting um, a business about remove it from, um, uh, from ocean. Uh, you can see also, for example, in Africa, they are using a lot of school that they make like a, a art fish and they call him the fish that eat plastic. It's like a, a metaphor way of uh, giving uh, this um, education of don't throw away plastic uh, because it's damaging uh, the environment. So I don't think that we will see black market, but we will see better people that are removing uh, this from the environment and doing that uh, 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 in a right way because it's what we have to do, not going back to a wrong, uh, wrong place was that we were. If we go to Bangladesh or we go to India, I, I lived three years in India, um, and I'm sure that they can get some money because they are removing uh, this and bring that to the place that they need. Uh, we will find a solution better than a black market. I don't know if I'm answering the question or understood very well. Well, thank you. Uh Valerie, um, we do have another question um, to you. So uh, you spoke about AI, right? Artificial intelligence. So yes. the question is, all economies push for artificial intelligence, which leads to automation. The current pandemic and crisis could be managed comparatively well because of technology. So how could technology or technological applications be brought down? Uh, um, I think um, uh, <laughs> um, I think that EA, okay, is um, intelligence artificial is very good in terms of data, okay, uh, but there is also always um, a responsibility that we will use um, intelligence artificial artificial intelligence because if we don't put a responsibility in the use of technology, uh, we can make more damage that uh, uh, getting a great impact about it. And that's where we need to stand in equilibrium about how we use the technology and how we build it and the goal of, uh, of it. That will be my answer. <laughs> okay, all right, that's fine. Um, well, another question. Uh, 
you are mentioning about the use of paper. So somebody has asked, won't the use of paper also cause loss of trees due to deforestation? Or uh, there are any other new paper sources apart from wood pulp? Can you repeat the question? I don't really understand it. Okay, so the question is, mm -hmm. the use of paper also causes loss of trees due to deforestation. Yes. So the person wants to know if there are any new paper sources apart from wood pulp. Well, uh, we, uh, uh, I don't understand the last uh, sentence, but um, um, deforestation is, is bad. So the reason why we were saying that in innovation, what we are doing is trying to uh, look at the soil and uh, make like regenerative uh, soils with uh, uh, putting new um, forest, for example, reforestation. So um, that's very important, but we can see that today we are still damaging um, um, Amazonia, okay? So in Brazil two years ago, uh, and that's what we need to stop because if we are speaking as Dakshita was saying, for example, about the mango, and after in the other part, we are uh, cutting um, 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 some forests, it's not good. So we also need to, um, look at data, where they are doing that, and fighting uh, for uh, deforestation, because deforestation is a capture of CO2. So it's very important that we follow not um, cutting some uh, uh, forest. I don't know if I answer well to the question. Yep, I think you answered. <laughs> Okay. In the best way possible. Thank you. I, I find um, I find a, a, a question where they speak about the food, and I would like to say something. Food loss from production to distribution forms are a significant proportion of the total food loss and was globally at about uh, uh, 76%, because I see a question that was uh, referring to this uh, food loss. Thank you for that, uh, Valerie. Thank you a lot. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, now I would, uh, since we are running out of time, uh, the last question is for Dakshita. And it's a question, it's a general question I would ask you, Dakshita. So you were talk, you have given two approaches of mitigation and, and adaptation, right? Hello? Yes, hi. Yes, so Dakshita, uh, I just want to know whether NG is actually supporting or uh, more of mitigation efforts or more of uh, adaptation efforts? Or is it having an, a balanced approach? Well, I can't say it's a balance and I can't say it's more or either. Because uh, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, it is what um, number one, what drives us as a business. So when it comes to mitigation, uh, of course, you know, our commitment to exit coal investments was a strong strategic direction. Uh, that affected us as in terms of revenue. So ultimately making that decision, it's, it's reducing and it's, it's mitigating our contributions when it comes to greenhouse gas emissions. Um, but equally on, on play, I mean, I can talk about adaptation where we're supporting uh, our uh, sustainable transport through EV technology, which is, you know, managed through um, uh, solar technology that supports a distribution network uh, to support sustainable transportation. So it's not about, you know, equally or, or not equally. It's about saying, where can you as a business drive efficiency? Where can you as a business drive actions that are impactful uh, and make a difference? This is, 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 you know, ultimately the change that we want to do. So if for us as a business, uh, if that means stopping coal investments and in growing our renewable, uh, you know, trans, um, portfolio, uh, and applications, then that be it. In terms of adaptation in, in supporting biodiversity, it's not our core business, but it's important to us to balance um, and supporting the natural biodiversity. And that is more from a CSR perspective um, that we kind of uh, implement some of those pro uh, projects. But it's taking those projects that are around say the CSR elements and incorporating it into our business model that then drives the innovation, that then drives that, that smart technology that helps uh, us and our clients uh, address climate transition. 
Shall I speak again? Uh, because I uh, just read uh, now because I didn't understand well the question where we are speaking about deforestation in paper. I think it's going through the question of Christopher uh, Carter that reduces the use of technology. Uh, it's very important that when we say reducing technology, we are not uh, I'm, I'm in technology and in innovation. It's not a question of reducing technology. It's the use that we are doing as people of this technology that are, is taking a lot of energy. So we cannot follow the same way of using this technology because we will use it for, for example, servers and things like that. So yes, uh, um, sending less email or uh, cleaning our box is very important because if you do it, you is not a, a lot, but if we are doing that all around the world, all the people, all the company is very important. And this also is as important as cleaning a, a, a beach place, for example, from plastic, because every little uh, action count for saving the climate change. If we are thinking about, as you say, oh, go back to paper and cutting through, no, we are not going to paper, but we need to have a better use of the technology as we are using it today, because we are not using in the correct way. And you will see that we will have a trend of doing better because today we are not doing as we can do as properly. Uh, sorry, <laughs> just okay. one because I read the question and now I understand the paper of deforestation because I didn't understand the question and reading it is better for me. Sorry. <laughs> uh, thanks a lot, both the speakers. That was uh, two great uh, presentations. Uh, any further questions? You may reach out to both the speakers later. For now, we have Morris who will be taking over to the next part of the webinar. So thank you all. <laughs>